drying of diethyl ether. Attention, diethyl ether and its vapors are highly flammable and can easily cause an explosion. In addition to that, ether has to be tested for the presence of peroxides. As long as the concentration is not too high, the peroxides have to be removed. These can easily explode when the ether is distilled. I don't take any responsibility for damage done to persons or property caused by the recreation of this experiment. The needed amount of diethyl ether is added to a flask. Usually a round bottom flask with a drying tube is used to allow a water free pressure equalization. It's important that the ether is pre-dried. In this case it was stored with potassium hydroxide so the step could be neglected. Next the oil is removed from a piece of sodium. It is then cut in thin slices to increase its surface. In the lab a sodium press is used to turn it into a wire. The flask is closed loosely with a rubber stopper so that pressure can be released. It is then left to sit overnight. The sodium reacts with the water in the ether to form sodium hydroxide and hydrogen, so all traces of water are removed. In addition to that, traces of peroxides are also removed. When the ether has not been pre-dried, the reaction can become too vigorous. That's why sodium is often preferred instead of potassium or a potassium-sodium alloy, even though these would be faster. The setup is a simple distillation. To the vacuum adapter, a gas washing flask with sulfuric acid or a drying tube is connected. The thermometer and the water are left away because the apparatus has to be baked at first. For this, every part of the apparatus is heated with a heat gun to evaporate water which is always bound to the surface of glass. It is then absorbed by the sulfuric acid. The baking took about 9 minutes. The formation of hydrogen didn't stop till the next day, which means that the ether has not dried completely. This could be due to the missing drying tube or the low surface of the sodium. It could help to wait another day, but there were two reasons why I decided against it. First, due to lack of time and second, the sodium is added to the flask in the distillation step. The heating and stirring speeds up the reaction. The flask is heated with a water bath. The temperature of the water bath should be around 40 degrees C to make sure that the ether doesn't boil too vigorous and all of the vapors could condense in the cooler. The receiving flask is cooled with ice when low boiling substances are distilled. The ether becomes cloudy due to the insoluble sodium hydroxide. The formation of hydrogen was so low that no pressure equalization could be noticed in the gas washing flask. The bubbles are formed because of the boiling ether. The measured boiling point was between 34 and 35 degrees C, which is exactly the boiling point of diethyl ether. When a small residue is left in the flask, the distillation is finished. It is never distilled to dryness due to safety reasons. The receiving flask can be removed when the apparatus has cooled down. The joint should be greased well to keep moisture from leaking into the flask. In the lab a lot of ethanol is added to sodium and in this case it is swelled a bit to distribute the heat. Isopropanol can also be used and reacts more slowly. Here the ethanol reacts with the sodium to form sodium ethoxide. With residual water it reacts to form sodium hydroxide again. When this is distilled, anhydrous ethanol which has about 99 to 100 percent can be obtained. This could not be achieved with simple distillation. This was the drying of diethyl ether. I hope you enjoyed. Please rate and comment.